All right, Ezekiel chapter 36, please. There's a heresy called replacement theology. What is replacement theology? Replacement theology teaches that the church replaces the nation of Israel. That is blatant, and I mean this, blatant heresy. Amen. That was start, started by Augustine. So people, if you are KJV only, independent fundamental Baptist, you are incredibly, incredibly, no offense, moronic, yep. because you should know better. Our history as KJV only, Bible-believing, independent Baptists, have always realized that the nation of Israel is God's own program with the nation of Amen. Israel. But then these guys would go to ancient writings, traditions of all the way back then, who were anti-Semitic and who taught that the church replaces the nation of Israel. You know who taught that? Augustine. Yep. You should know better, man. Believe sprinkling babies. Ba if babies not elect, they, they, they're going to burn in hell. The very idea. Wow. So replacement theology is a blatant heresy you should but you know what's amazing is that when you go online, because they keep covering all the conspiracies of Jewish elites, they go to Hollywood, the bankers, and then the Rothschilds, all those guys, they automatically think that this is an evil nation and that cannot be God's chosen people. Things like that make me wonder if they even read their Old Testament. The Bible says the nation of Israel, God's own people in the Old Testament, lived more wickedly than their other nations. Yep. Who do you think Satan's going to attack the most with the most evil? Amen. Should be thought-provoking right there. Okay, anyways, so we see right here that uh, because of this, that's why they are not God's chosen people, because they, the Jewish nation rejected their Messiah, Jesus Christ. In fact, their religion says a lot of disgusting things about Jesus Christ, rabbinical Judaism which I won't go into, but it is pure evil. So let's look at 1 Thessalonians 2. This is what God did with them. 2, 14 through 16. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. Notice that Jews were the ones who always persecuted the Christian church, even at the early century. You are very gullible not to think that Satan would use God's own people during that time to become one of the most wicked. And if you don't believe that, you should see one of the most wicked people who ever lived are some people who are Christians. Didn't you know that? Look at your own churches. See, you are very gullible of Satan's devices. Satan's not going to attack someone who's already going to hell. He's going to attack someone who's leaning toward a church, someone who's a Bible believer. He's going to especially keep his eyes on those. He wants those people to become the most evil. That way he can rub his nose against God that your most chosen vessel has become my best chosen vessel. Come on, people are very ignorant of Satan's devices. You're, you claim you're alert about, you're being a truther, you're alert about the evil's devices. You're very gullible to not know the devices of Satan that he would use God's chosen. That should be a no-brainer. If, if Satan is that smart, he's not stupid. But let's look at, keep reading right here. Verse 15, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved. Now look at this part. To fill up their sins alway, for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. So notice right here, this is their proof text that... Israel is forever discarded because wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. So forever gone. This is not temporary. The Jews, the nation of Israel, is forever gone. Now the thing is this. There are so many other verses that they will use, but we won't turn over there for time's sake. But I'm going to list all these verses so I can show that I'm thoroughly covering all bases of replacement theology. There's Psalms 44, 4 through 9. There's uh, 1 Corinthians 16, 22. That's why being a dispensationalist, Bible-believing dispensationalist, is more of a truther. These guys, they don't want to... I'm being fair and showing all their proof texts. These guys just want to pull out their best proof text, and that's it. Matthew 21. 
And please don't listen to me. What, read the, look at the verse. Look at the verse, man. Look at the verse. Will you please look at the verse? I thought you were a truther. I thought you were a researcher. Don't just listen one year out the other. Look at the verse, okay? Go home and do your homework. Matthew 21, 18 through 20. Uh, let's see right here. Excuse me. Uh, Luke chapter 13, verses 6 through 9. These are, and trust me, I know this. Replacement theology don't even know all these verses of their proof text. I had to dig it up for them. So I'm helping them out here. I'm helping replacement theology here. There's also Matthew chapter 8, verses 10 through 12. There's also Isaiah 24, 5 through 6. The other proof text that I know is very famous is Revelation 2, Ephesians 2, John 8, yada, 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 but that was covered in my other video. So I'm not going to cover those verses. That was already covered in my other video. Okay, now if you look at all these verses, it, the RT proponents or replacement theology proponents argue that God cast aside forever because they failed to follow the conditions of his covenant with Israel. That's what you're going to find out in all those verses. That's the bottom line. Now, the way to easily debunk this is that it's true they were cast aside, but you got to realize it's only temporary. God knew they would return to him. So yes, they failed to follow the conditions of the covenant. Yes, because of that, God did cast them aside. There is no doubt when you look at these verses, but none of those verses ever said it was forever. It was permanent. It just simply said God rejected them, God cast them aside. But they don't finish the context. If you look at the verses, the Bible says he cast them aside, but he will restore them. This is why we believe called the restoration of the nation of Israel. People say restoration of Israel's is heresy. No. Restore, meaning we acknowledge that they've been replaced. We acknowledge they've been cast aside. But God's going to restore them again. Okay? That's what it means. Now, if you don't believe me, look at Ezekiel. I hope your hand's over there in chapter 36. Okay, you know what the easy debunking is with 1 Thessalonians 2? If you're a King James only, independent, fundamental, Baptist, we are the new kind of fundamental Baptist, blah, 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 blah. And the reason why I'm mocking them is some of them are so arrogant that they think 20 churches around the whole world is the only right group. Arrogance. I don't even say that, man. I don't even say that. Arrogance. Proud. If they claim that they're such KJV only you know what's really funny? In, their, in the King James Bible, it doesn't say forever. It says what? Uttermost. Yes. God did the uttermost. If you don't believe me, look at the past 2,000 years of history. You don't think God really did a job with the nation of Israel? They didn't have a nation for thousands of years. They were cast aside by other nations. Not only that, the Lord raised up a lot of, I mean, a lot of nations who were very evil, who persecuted and even killed and annihilated large amounts of Jews. For example, Adolf Hitler. You don't think God's wrath was uttermost that time when you had millions dropping into the pits? Yeah. That's not uttermost? That's not uttermost? You better thank God God didn't spank you that hard, man. Amen. What kind of wicked people would think that these, they should... These people are evil. They should get it worse. They should get it more. What kind of evil Christian are you if you're a safe Christian? Not only that, if you're a KJV onlyist, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You are not a KJV onlyist. You know why? Because our King James Bible says uttermost. Your modern Bible says forever at 1 Thessalonians 2. Your modern Bible. Oh, and you're a KJV onlyist. You proud, arrogant fool you are, man. So you got to realize this. this doctrine is from the pits of hell. Amen. It supports the New World Bible versions right. about forever cast out, forever cast out. We are the real people of God. Here's the problem with them. They don't divide church and Israel. So you got to realize this. Israel is God's physical nation. Now, are we a physical nation or spiritual? Spiritual. So that's why we believe in a spiritual nation. But Jews are a physical nation. Why else would God tell them to do water baptism to cleanse away the filth of their 
physical flesh. Why else would God tell them that as a physical nation, they observe laws that their physical body has to practice? Why do they have to have physical observances of physical days? And Paul, why did he spiritualize all of that for the Christian then? And said our salvation was not dependent on those things. See that? Now let's look at Ezekiel chapter 36. Now we will read verses 17 through 24. Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way and by their doings. Their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. Wherefore I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land and for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. And I what? Scattered them among the heathen. See that? We believe that. He forsook them. And they were dispersed through the countries according to their way and according to their doings. I what? Yeah, he did judge them. He uttermost. And when they entered unto the heathen, whither they went, they profaned my holy name. Uh, keep reading. And are gone, gone forth what? Out of his land. These are the people of the Lord and are gone forth out of his land. That's right. They were cast out. We believe in that. But look at this. Verse 21. But I had what? Pity for mine holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned. Look at verse 22. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake. The Rothschild, the bankers, the Hollywood, evil Jew, evil Jew. I'm not doing it for their sake, God says. I'm doing it for my holy name's sake. That's what God says. Let's keep reading right here. Notice right here, verse 24, For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will what? Bring you into your own land. When did that happen? With any nation on earth. And was he speaking to Christians here? Come on. He was speaking to his nation of Israel, Jews at that time. Christians didn't even exist yet at that time. So you'll notice right here that the church did not exist that time, the Christian church. The nation of Israel, he was speaking to them, they would be regathered. Thus, Israel, back in 1947 to 1948, what is that then? That's God starting his restoration process. They are not fully restored, obviously, because there's so much evil. But he's starting his restoration process. Now, if you like to say that was Illuminati made, that was all conspiracy, that was of the devil, that was not of God, then you don't know your Bible, friend. The Bible says it was of the Lord. I do not deny there were satanic forces involved when uh, Israel was founded, but guess what? America and all other nations too. Just like your King James Bible too. Didn't you know there were satanic forces behind it? No, there weren't. Yeah, there were. Didn't you know how hard the Catholic Church, the Jesuits, and modern Bible societies today, they're following the coattails, trying to outrank the King James Bible, trying to corrupt the King James Bible? Satan will always follow behind the coattails of God's work. That's, That's where you're very ignorant. You think it's only God. It's only the devil. No, you got to realize this. Whenever God is moving in this church too and in your church, don't you dare think Satan will not sit in the pew right next to you. That's good. Good. Right there. Yeah. Now I'm going on and on. Let's look at Ezekiel 16. Ezekiel 16. I didn't show you my proof text, a lot of them. There's so many. So what I'm going to do is write them down. And please, please, please don't believe a word that I'm saying and don't try to ignorantly criticize me so easily. Look at these verses, okay? Look at Isaiah. In your own time, look at Isaiah 11, 10 through 13. Rejected but restored. Also look at um, Daniel 9, 24 through 27. Sins, because of their sins, rejected punished but restored look at Romans 11 because of their sins God rejected them they're called enemies but they're restored look at Hebrews chapter 8 and verses 8 to 12 God makes a brand new covenant because they broke the old covenant oh yeah the covenants broken they can't restore that it's done it's gone yeah gone and God all he has to do is set up a new covenant at Hebrews 8 People don't read their Bibles. That's why dispensationalism is so important. We believe in rightly dividing verses to the right group of people to the right time period. Dispensationalism believes there's a difference with a church 
and a Jew. There's a difference with church and Israel. Christian does not equal Jew, all right? Not even atheists think like that, all right? Christian equals Jew, you know? Only idiots would teach that. And the kind of idiots who would do that are those who have an agenda, who have a hateful anti-Semitic spirit. They want what they got. If you people were fooled by this, I'm not bashing or criticizing you. I think you are just sheep who are easily fooled, and I could have been worse than you when I followed this system. But the thing is this, is that those people who know about dispensationalism and the very idea they would call themselves KJV only, independent Baptists, they ought to know better. And those guys are the tools of Satan himself and the spiritual spawn of Judas Iscariot. Yeah, and I will only say that metaphorically. That I'm just going to say that metaphorically because I'm sure they might be saved Christians. Okay, so let's look at Ezekiel 16, verse 2. Wicked people. Son of man caused Jerusalem to know her what? Abomination. See that? So, they're so wicked. Abomination. Look at verse 59. Verse 59. For thus saith the Lord God, I will even deal with thee as thou hast done, which thou hast despised the oath in what? Breaking the covenant. Ah, ah, see? Cast away permanently. Three points for us. Look at this, you replacement theology heretic. Look at the next verse right there. It's broken, but look at verse 60. Nevertheless, I will remember my covenant with thee in the days of thy youth, and I will establish unto thee, and what? Everlasting covenant. Oh, 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 they're cast aside. It's permanent. The uttermost, the uttermost. Yeah, uttermost. You dumb bucket, you. God just has to set up something new. You dumb bucket, you. And you claim to be a pastor? Oh, I have 200 people on average, 100 people on average. On. Yeah, I know Bible-believing pastors who average 400, 500, 1,000 something. You arrogant, prideful jerk you are, Amen. you heretical pastor you. In Jesus', uh, in Jesus name. Amen. In Jesus' name. I told you, I, I don't hold back when I kick. I'll do that when I have to. All right. Now uh, look at verse 62. We're not done. We're not done. And I will establish my covenant with thee, and thou shalt know that what? I am the Lord. See, God did not, oh, they cannot be saved. They cannot be God's elect. Look, 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 look. He didn't set up the new thing yet, okay? It's in a process, okay? Can I repeat? It's in a process. Process. And then he's going to set up something new. Amen. And when it's new, then they shall know that I am the Lord. Right now, they're shot. They're going to hell. There's so much evil in there. And yes, maybe they're more evil than America. I don't know. But the point is this, is that God is doing the restore, restoration process. And when he sets up, when he sets up, not us, we don't set it up, all right? No matter how much soul winning you do, we're not going to set up. When God himself comes down, sets up his new kingdom, which happens after the tribulation. Right. So you see, we got a long ways to go, okay? Of course, they're evil right now. When he sets up this new covenant, boom, then they will know that he is the Lord. For crying out loud, he, didn't you know the Antichrist will come from the nation of Israel? These people, very ignorant, very ignorant. Judas Iscariot, who was he? He was a Jew, man. You think he was an American? He's Babylon, USA. He's Babylon, USA, you know. He's a Jew, man. He was a Jew. So Satan will use... He will specifically select God's people to accomplish his task, to rub his nose against the face of God. That's Satan's tactic. People are extremely ignorant of the Bible nowadays.